In this video, we're gonna create realistic background lights in Photoshop and also in the process we're gonna learn different techniques like step and repeat, advanced masking, advanced blurring and a lot of other stuff that's gonna be really useful to you, not just in this effect, but any effect, anything you do in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So here we are in Photoshop and by the way, this image is available for download. Check the link in the description below. So the first thing that we need to do, control command J, make a copy of the background layer. Okay. Then what we need to do, we need to select the subject and extract the subject. Why? Because we are adding lights behind the subject. So you want just the subject to be ahead of it, right? So to do that, select a quick, select the quick selection tool and then just simply select the subject. I'm doing a pretty good job. You can take as much time you want. Let's zoom in and let's clear up the face. So as you can see, the selection is right here. Perfect. But face needs a little bit of retouch there. There we go. Select a little extra. There we go. Okay. So let's analyze that. So, okay. So make sure that auto enhance is checked. The time it's taking, the loading that's happening, it's because of auto enhance. So Photoshop is using auto enhance to make it better. Now this has made a quite perfect selection. Let's select this extra area. There we go. Now we have the selection of this. Now all you have to do once it has been selected, once your subject has been selected, click this button, the mask button. That way you have this separately in its own layer. Don't worry about the top because the light is not anyway not going to fall on that area. So there we go. Now select the background layer, create a new layer, click on this page icon. There we go, new layer. And in this we're going to create streaks of light. Okay. So select say the rectangular marquee tool, or you can create any shape of light you want. You can create squares, you can create rectangles, you can create circles, any shape of light you want. Depends upon the shape of the window or shape of the source of light, okay? So in this, I wanna make streaks of light falling from windows and you get the idea, right? Okay, so let's make something like this, okay? And let's fill it with white. So make sure the foreground color is white and press Alt Backspace. Okay, or if you're using a Mac, it's option delete. Now, if your foreground color is not white, you can click here and select white. And what you can also do, you can press D to reset the swatches and then press X. Okay, or you can press X if it's already black and white. Now, you can press and hold alter option and make a copy just like that, and but it's not gonna be uniform. What's better to do is this one. This is called step and repeat, and this is really, really interesting. Also, you can create different bars and fill tool again and again, but that's gonna take a lot of time. Here's what's accurate, okay? Control, Alt, T. If you're using a Mac, press Command, Option, T. Remember that, Command, Option, T. Control, Alt, T. Now, move it. As you can see, this creates a copy. You wanna place it here. Okay, this is good. Press enter. Now all you have to do now is press Control Alt Shift T. And this happens again. Control Alt Shift T again. Happens again, happens again, happens again. Isn't that interesting? Now this is really very simple but quite tricky to remember. Here's how to remember this. Now whenever you want to record a transformation, you will press Control Alt T or Command Option T. And whenever you want to repeat that, you're gonna press Control Alt Shift T. An extra button, shift, okay? Control Alt T for recording, for repeating, Control Alt Shift T. Just an extra button, shift for repeat. For example, you can create any kind of transformation like you can make say a circle, something like that. Let's go ahead and close it. And then you can go to Control Alt T and copy it and make it smaller, rotate it, press enter, then you can press Control Alt Shift T and that will just keep on repeating. Any kind of transformation, it just repeats. To record, Control Alt T, to repeat, Control Alt Shift T. All right, so let's go ahead and undo that. We don't want that. Okay, that's great. Now, let's merge all these layers. We don't want all of them to be separate, right? So let's merge all of these. So select the topmost layer with the bar, okay? Select the bottommost layer with the bar, press and hold Shift and click on that. And then press Control Command E. Now this merges everything, right? As you can see, it's on its own layer merged. Now let's give it a direction. It's really simple to do, just apply distort. So control command T, right click on it and click distort. Now you can give, make it any shape you want. Now if you move it, here's the tip. If you move it, it's gonna move in crazy angles, but when you move this and when you hold shift, 
it's going to move in a straight line. Isn't that interesting? So leave it at that. And that's pretty much cool. Move it a little up. There we go. Move it a little down and let's move all of them a little down. And there we go. Press enter once you're satisfied. And there we have the light. Now we need to blur it. But before you do, let's try different blend modes to it. So normal is good. You can always go ahead and decrease the opacity to see how it's looking. But you can also try something like overlay. Sometimes it works wonders. Look how beautiful this looks in this setting. To double the intensity of the light, you can also control the command J. But we don't want that. Okay, now let's add a little bit of blur to it because of course light's a little bit blurry. Okay, so to do that, first convert this into a smart object. Always do that. Filter, convert for smart filters. Also what you can do, right click on it and click to click convert to smart object. Okay, two ways of doing the same thing. Then go to filter, blur gallery and select any of those. So I will select field blur. And then what field blur does is that field blur is just like Gaussian blur. It applies an overall blur. So field blur, I would keep somewhere around say 21, 22, 22 is good. Okay, now let's add tilt shift. Now here's the magic. When you apply tilt shift, what tilt shift does is that it allows you to apply a gradual blur. For example, this, com this area completely sharp. Now as you go further, it completely blurs out gradually this is a little blur more blur more blur completely blur you basically have the idea so as the light falls the more further it goes the more blurred it becomes it applies a gradual blur let's just open this up and let's just move it there okay we have to move it there and now the gradual blur is horizontal we want to make it in this we want to make it perpendicular to the direction of light so to rotate it just hover over this and when the cursor changes to a bent icon just rotate this this way okay there we go just perpendicular to the direction of light perpendicular means 90 degrees if light is falling this way you would keep it this way okay all right so let's rotate it there we go now let's in take this boundary to the right this is where the blur ends now, what do that mean? If I increase the blur, for example, say this much, okay? This is where the blurring starts from. This is where the blurring ends. This is zero pixel blur. This is 113 pixels blur. We have selected 113. Uh, 13. This is zero pixel. Anything on the left hand side of this is zero pixel blur. Anything on the right hand side of this is 113 pixels blur. So we need to take it all the way to the right. Okay, and we need to start the blurring process right from here. Okay, let's move it there. Oops, we didn't want to do that. We just wanted to move it back and we want to move this. There we go. Now, this is good. Okay, let's increase the values there. Let's take it a little back and let's increase the blur. Not too much. Maybe somewhere around this. Now, this is cool. I think this is nice. Let's take it somewhere around that. Now you can control distortion if you want to. There we go. And this is pretty much good. I'm pretty much satisfied with it. Now once you're satisfied, you can click OK. All right, I'm pretty much good with 50. Now, once you're satisfied with this, you can also try Iris Blur. It does the same thing as Tilt Shift, but in a circular way. It's interesting, you can try it. And once you're satisfied, click OK. Have a look. It's beautiful light, right? Now it's time for us to add some masking to it. So we don't want the light to show up here on the left hand side, right? So all you have to do, create a mask. Click on this button. And now, select the gradient tool. Make sure it's black to white. If it's not, drop down arrow, select black to white. And then let's try different things. Okay, now this is looking good. In the direction of light, always in the direction of light. Also, you can try it this way. There we go. Depends upon the shape of the window. This looks nice. Uh, I think I like this. Okay, so once you're satisfied, okay, you can also add some mask from the right. Okay, so to do that, make sure it's black to transparent this time. Not black to white, black to transparent. Okay, so if you don't see it, you can click this gear icon and you can select the reset gradients, click OK, and then you have black to transparent, and then you can add a little bit of gradient from this side too if you want to. So let's zoom out, let's add a little, just a little, just here, there. Also, here's one more thing. This problem that I come across again and again. Now, when you apply things like this, for example, and you wanna remove it later, you cannot do it because suppose you did 100 steps and then you wanna remove this gradient, this side of gradient. 
it's impossible you're gonna you have to do it all over again you have to select this you have to make this gradient then make this gradient all over again so here's what i personally do i make a group Control a command G and this group just controls just has this layer the light layer and create another mask in the group that way you have two masks so if you are not happy with this side of the gradient you can edit this if you are not happy with this side of the gradient you can edit this that way you have two masks so that's a little trick there now once you have the light you can double the impact by pressing Control a command J this makes a copy of the light and then it's again gonna take time to render the slot photos but it's really great now finally it has rendered it now i know it's a way too strong so all you have to do let's collapse both of the groups group one and group one copy and make a group of both of those groups so press and hold controller command and select both of those groups controller command g so we have it now decrease the opacity there we go to the point we like it i like 57 and that's pretty good now what you can do if the window has vertical bars it will create vertical shadows right it's very easy to create create another mask Take a brush, make sure the foreground color is black and then make the brush a little bigger. Okay, make it a little softer and just click once here. Okay, press and hold shift. Click once at the other point. Creates a straight line. There you go. You want to create something here. You can do that if you want. Make the brush a little smaller. As you move to the left, the brush gets smaller. Okay, since the shadows get smaller. Click one here, click once here. Press and hold shift. Click here. Creates a straight line. There we go. So that's how you create realistic background lights in Photoshop. Just a quick recap. First, make a copy of the background layer. Now in that copy of the background layer, extract the subject. How? Select the subject, create a mask. Between those layers, create a new layer and in that layer, create the light layer, any shape of light you want. Blur it out, change, try different blend mode, opacity. And that's it. Mask it if you want. Now, here's a little shortcut and little thing to remember about step and repeat. Now whenever you want to record something, Press Ctrl Alt T, Command Option T if you are using a Mac. When you want to repeat something, Command Option Shift T. Add that extra shift to it, Ctrl Alt Shift T. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, click on that bell button so that you my friend don't miss anything. Also I would like to thank all our supporters who are helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever through Patreon. If you want to support this channel, check the link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you on my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.